Let's take a look at this camera, a camera that I think does not get the attention that it truly deserves. In the world that we're in right now, with all this short form and vertical content, why are we still using only horizontal based cameras? Only the cameras that shoot in a 16 by nine ratio. If we're gonna really try to create a lot of vertical content, should we consider how we can do this with a nine by 16 camera? Well, this is your solution. It's a vertical camera a vertical PTZ camera to be more specific. Now, if you're brand new here, my name is Monty Weaver and I focus a lot on PTZ style cameras, the cameras that allow you to pan, tilt, and zoom. And YOLO Live actually sent me over this camera, the VertiCam, which is a PTZ vertical camera. I'm gonna show you some of the features of this camera and why I think it's really something you should consider if you're doing a lot of short form video. Now, as I mentioned, this is a PTZ camera, which means it has the ability to pan, to tilt, and to zoom. So if you're a solo operation and you want to have more than just a one single static shot, you can actually use this camera to move around the room. It can zoom in on you and it can zoom out. This camera can do a lot because of its PTZ functionality. And it's one of the only cameras, I believe the only camera right now, that's capable of doing this and doing it in a vertical format. Let's quickly go through some of the physical features of this camera. On the back of the camera, you have your power connection, which is a traditional 12 volt power connection. This is how you're gonna be able to turn on and off the camera. There is no physical on and off switch. So once you connect the camera to the power source, the camera will power up and go through its startup sequence. You'll also be able to see the LED indicator light on the front of the camera to let you know that it is powering up and starting. Now, if we take a look at the first port on the left-hand side of the camera, you're gonna see that it is a blue USB 3.0 port. You can actually connect this camera directly into your computer. And that's how I'm gonna set it up for this demonstration. One simple USB camera from the back of my camera into my computer and I don't need to worry about any type of video capture card for that connection. Now, if you don't wanna use the USB port, you can use the HDMI port, but just make sure that you have a video capture card to correctly get that signal into your video interface, whether that's a live stream video switcher or again, directly into your computer. So you have two ways to physically connect this camera. The next port to take a look at is the line in port. You're gonna be able to connect a 3.5 millimeter connection into this port. Now, because there are no type of adapters that would allow you to mount a microphone, please be aware of that scenario if you run into it. So traditionally, I don't route my audio through my cameras. I do that separately, but this camera does give you the ability to connect a microphone if you want to. The next port on the camera is the RS-232 input. This is gonna allow you to connect this camera to a joystick controller. And I'm a big fan of that if you've watched any videos on my channel. But because this camera actually has an input and an output, you can daisy chain two of these cameras together. So if you want to have a multi-camera setup in the vertical format, you can get two of these cameras and daisy chain them together using the RS-232 connection and connecting that to a dedicated controller. But let's just say you don't have a controller or not familiar with the functionality of using a controller. This camera does come with a dedicated remote control. So you can actually pan, tilt, and zoom with the remote along with setting up presets that will allow you to call certain preset camera functionality that you wanna control all through this remote. It's time to put this camera to use. I'm gonna show you how to use it and set it up with one of the most popular free live streaming platforms in the marketplace, OBS. So let me get some power. I'm gonna grab our 12 volt power connection and plug it in. Then I'm gonna grab the included USB cable, 3.0 USB in the back of the camera here and USB into my laptop here. Let's go ahead and get this camera turned around so it'll actually point and look at me. Now I'm also gonna grab a tripod because right now this camera is sitting directly on the table and when I turn it on, it's gonna look directly up my nose and we don't need that. So let me grab a tripod. Now this camera does allow us to mount it on the tripod because of the 
quarter inch on the bottom. So we're gonna grab our tripod adapter and screw that on the bottom here. Up here. So we're all set up. And like I mentioned, we can actually control this camera using the included remote. So if I use the left and right functionalities, I can make the camera go in those directions along with zooming out and zooming in. And I'll show you that here in a second. So let's go into the OBS software and we're gonna bring this camera in as a camera source. So if I look at my scenes, the first one I have is blank. So I'll create a brand new scene and we'll call this vertical cam, select okay. And then under sources, we'll go into video capture device. This is the VertiCam and we'll select okay. And the camera that we're gonna be looking for is the HD camera, which is what we have here. But you can see that it is actually in the horizontal landscape and we don't want that. We actually want to make this vertical. So if we right click on the VertiCam and under the sources tab and then go under the transform section, we can turn this 90 degrees and now it's in the right orientation. By grabbing any of the red dots on the corners, we can actually resize this to the appropriate dimensions for OBS and making sure that we cover up the entire real estate of that nine by 16 aspect ratio. Now, if you wanted to add something in the background, you can definitely do that as well. But you can see how easy it is to bring it into this platform. And now, if we wanted to live stream to one of our favorite platforms that accepts vertical live streaming, we can now live stream in the vertical orientation, which quite frankly, is the best way to do it. And we always know what's going to be on camera because if you're just live streaming with a horizontal camera and you're trying to live stream to a vertical platform, you have to make sure that you stay in frame. And sometimes that can be difficult or maybe you're recording content and you have to stay in that middle third. Well, if you use a camera that only has the middle third, you are forced to stay inside of that frame and visually it just helps you do so. Now on this remote, we actually can go into the menu simply by selecting menu and the different options that we can change within the camera are available to us. So definitely if you get this camera, go through the menu, check out those different options that you have and make any adjustments or any tweaks that you may need to do so. Now using this camera with OBS, you may be limited mainly because of OBS. And if you want to live stream to a platform like TikTok or Instagram, OBS is a little cumbersome of a platform and you have to actually learn how to use it. But what if you could natively use this camera with a mobile device and go live to Instagram or TikTok and you didn't have to worry about all of the OBS stuff? Well, you can do that as well. We are gonna pair this camera with another YOLO Live product and it's called the YOLO Live InStream. Now this is the YOLO Live InStream and this is an iPhone 13 Pro Max. And if you compare the size to it, you can see that the InStream is not that much larger than this phone. So this can be your all-inclusive mobile encoding device. So rather than trying to go live and connect this to your mobile device, you're gonna connect it to this device. And this device is a lot more powerful for live streaming, especially as we're talking about vertical video. Now in some upcoming videos, we'll talk more about the in-stream, but I really wanna focus on using vertical video and specifically with this camera. So I'm gonna disconnect my USB cable from my computer and plug it directly into the in-stream because this has a USB port, obviously. Now, as soon as I plug the camera into the in-stream, it shows that I have done so. It shows that I have a new video source but we do need to correct the video source orientation before we do anything with the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that by clicking on the gear icon, and then we'll go ahead and adjust my camera. And now I'm in frame of the camera for vertical video. Now, as you can see here on the homepage of the InStream, we natively have Instagram, TikTok, Zoom, Facebook, and CapCut as our built-in platforms. You don't have to go out and install these. These come natively with the operating system of the InStream. So all you have to do is log into the particular platform that you want to so that you can begin to live stream. Or if you just wanna record your content, you can do that just by going into the record function of the InStream. 
So let's use Instagram for example. Now I'm not actually gonna live stream to Instagram, but I do wanna show you the process of what it would look like. So when we open up our Instagram account, we can then select on our profile. Make sure we hit the plus sign in Instagram and go over to the live section. Now this is what our live streamers would see is our vertical video, something that you're already familiar with doing. But if you pair this camera with the end stream, now you can add some additional professional elements. So one of the things that I like to do are lower thirds. So I'll go into our overlay section, select the plus sign, lower thirds, and I can add a lower third. I'm gonna go ahead and customize this a little bit with my name. And vertical video demo. And I can even change the background. I'm wearing blue today, so we'll go with the blue background. And I can move where I want this text to show on screen. So now, when I'm gonna go live, I can actually have my live show something like this versus just a blank, generic live stream with just video only. And with the end stream, I can add pictures, images. I can add all kinds of customization to my live streams. So let's do a countdown timer because I really believe countdown timers are one of the best tools to use, really underrated, because countdown timers allow your audience time to show up and be prepared for your live stream. So you can do this by going into overlays, hitting the plus sign, countdown timers, and by default, there's already two countdown timers available. So we'll use the top one because it's blue, and we can do all kinds of customizations with our countdown timer as well. We'll just leave it as default, select done, and we can use a countdown timer for our live stream. Now, where have you seen this at? All of this can be done with the infrastructure of using the YOLO Live products. Now, if you're gonna be doing a lot of vertical content, you might wanna to start to look at a vertical infrastructure and YOLO Live is changing the game in how they are bringing the right equipment for the task. I'm gonna to link to the camera and the end stream in the first comment of this video, along with the description section of the video, but I find that you guys respond better if I link it to that first comment section. So make sure you check it out there and check out some of the other things that I have in the Amazon shop. My goal is to share with you guys the weekly deals that I'm finding on Amazon, so that way you guys can take advantage of those deals. Some of those deals move pretty quick, even deals that are associated with the YOLO Live products. If this video has got your wheels turning just a little bit, do me a huge favor, hit the thumbs up on this video. That way it lets me know that I need to share with you more about this product, about the VertiCam and the InStream.